What if I told you that with just 10 tips, you can grow more than 100 kilos of food in 40 square meters. The first thing that I would highly recommend is to recycle old materials. It's extremely cheap, it's gonna help you to reduce your waste, and there is a huge variety of things that you can bring into your garden and give them new life. We use plastic bottles to create vertical gardens, just making sure that you select HDPE to plastic, which is the safest plastic to use in the garden, but also old bricks that you can use for a fireplace or to raise your water tank, to create the border for a nice flower bed, and old tires that you can convert into pots for your plants, uh, like we did for our front garden. Coming up next is starting from seeds. It's such an essential step for every gardener to source good quality seeds, to have healthy and productive plants into your garden. It's cost effective because with the same price for a packet of seeds, you usually buy one plug plant from the nursery and you will have a greater variety of plants because you could be growing things that you usually don't find at your local garden center, but unusual cucumbers, tomatoes, and so many other things. This plant is called comfrey, and it's the absolute golden ticket for every organic gardener. It produces flowers, which attracts pollinators, but also the wide leaves shade the soil, protecting the soil biology. And it has a long taproot, which withdraws the minerals down deep into the ground in a bioavailable form for your plants. So you can simply chop it down into pieces, add it into an old sock and submerge this sock into a tank of water. And then you can use that water to water your garden and have a completely free source of fertilizer. Alternatively, you can add it straight into your raised bed, so it will slowly decompose and provide food for your plants. But you can also use it in a sort of tea-infused solution to reactivate your compost because it's full of nitrogen. Or you can place it around your plants, so chop and drop, as it's normally called, and it will create a barrier against slugs and snails. Adding flowers to your growing space is the secret for a healthy and productive garden. Having a garden is not only about growing food, but mimicking nature to create an ecosystem which encourages pollinators to access your garden. Flowers are also edible and medicinal, like violas, like we planted in our vertical garden in the backyard, or many medicinal plants that we planted in our front yard, like chamomile, caraway, lavender and wormwood. To fill up my raised beds, I use a combination between Yugel culture and no-dig gardening. Yugel culture is a great technique to save money because you won't use purely compost to fill up those tall raised beds, but you can start by adding cardboard at the bottom if there are weeds growing all over the place, big logs, twigs, spoiled hail, comfrey or food waste, and then add the compost on the top. And all I do every year is to simply top it up with a thin layer of compost, and by doing so, I don't disturb the microorganisms into the ground, and I help to improve the biodiversity and activity of my living soil. The next thing that I wish I knew before is mulching your garden. There are different materials that could be used to mulch your garden. It could be seaweed, if you're close to the beach, or it could be wood chips, well-rotted wood chips, for a few plants like raspberries or gooseberries, or straw, like we are using mainly here in the garden. And it has multiple functions, like protecting your soil biology, but also retaining moisture, which is an essential part if you're growing plants in raised beds or pots. Because the space is limited, so the plants will soak up that water really quick, and by doing this, you make sure that you need to water less your garden. But another brilliant function of using mulching like straw in your garden is the chance to grow mushrooms. So you can intercrop not only growing plants in pots and raised beds, but you can inoculate the straw with mushroom spawn and have an extra production of food all around your plant. Tip number seven, we got composting. Making your own compost is a step towards self-sufficiency because you can reduce your waste by composting all your food scraps from the kitchen, 
but you can also make an incredible source of nutrients for your garden directly in your growing space. If you have a small space like my backyard garden, you can make an easy composting system using a pallet and some mesh and you can stratify carbon and nitrogen, which basically means brown ingredients and green ingredients. If you have a bigger space, you can make your own system using pallets and it works pretty much the same way, but you will have to turn it a couple of times in order to aerate it and decompose all the materials. However, there are other methods like my warm farm, which you can make yourself or buy and you just need to add worms one single time and they keep reproducing, decomposing your waste and turning it into black gold that you can use straight in the garden to fertilize your plants. And the last method that you can use straight in your kitchen is using a bokashi bean. It doesn't smell and you can transform your food scraps into fermented food waste that can be transferred straight into your garden. Using the right tools, could make the difference between an easy task and something much harder to do. This is why I highly recommend investing in copper tools. They're a bit pricey compared to normal tools, but they will help you because they release micro minerals the more you use them in the garden, which will be absorbed by your plants and benefit the health of your garden. But also slugs and snails have blood based on copper, which means that every time that you use normal tools, you will leave a scent into the ground, which they can track. And this won't happen if you use copper tools. Growing vertically is the perfect method to maximize your food production in a small space. Over the years, we built different vertical gardens using plastic bottles, and it helped us to create another layer of growing plants above the garden. But you can also build your own vertical trellis with a bit of DIY, like I did in the past, and I'm gonna link it up here so you can see how easy, with a few materials, you can start growing your plants vertically. Alternatively, you can use bamboo to build a structure for peas or beans by simply placing them in a circle and then join them together at the top. And this is called a TP, and it's a super easy and effective system for a small space. And last but not least, we have companion planting, which means pairing together different plants which have functions to help each other. And this could be basil, marigold, and tomatoes, or simply spring onions with lettuce, or the famous three sister methods with corn, beans, and pumpkins. This method not only benefits your plants, but you can condense a lot of different crops in a small space, maximizing the food production of your small garden. If you're just starting out, we just released a fully sustainable gardening kit containing all the tools to allow you to grow your own food. And it's 100% compostable, so once you finish to use it, you won't have any waste. I hope you liked today's video, and if so, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next week for a new episode. Thank you so much for watching.